move back to OpenCV. So I'm going to save this link. I've got all the dependencies now. Happy with that. Um, additional download. still going. Right, it's obviously a big package, but it's slow. Let's just check. 85 mega is a reasonable size. Okay, it's finished now. Okay, so expand this additional modules table and got some options here maybe to look at. So let's create the build directory and then copy the CMake command. So with Zinni on, we've got that. We've enabled pre compiled headers off. And open CV extra modules path. Instructs the system to build. I can't actually see that. No, it's not actually there, that one. Open CV. Okay. So if you have downloaded the extra modules, you'll need to add in this line here as well. So I'll put that in there. Right, so this is output some settings, quite a few settings actually. A summary, um, so you can see it's found libraries that are built into the system, so these must be some of the options. So we should be ready to go with a build.
Okay, that's finished building. There's no test suite, so we'll just install. And that's complete. So that's open CV. Chapter 10. Shut that down. Go back to GST plugins and tidy it up. Right, so we've got to open CV with the additional modules, open JPEG. Done. Opus have done SBC SDL. Wayland. X265, so this looks like it's now all complete for the bad plugins. So let's save this. Uh, bad. Uh, so we've got a similar warning about Objective C, which we should have, I believe. And if you need a plugin for a given dependency, that dependency needs to be installed before this package. So there's no extra options, we're just copy and paste to build this. Okay, now I'm going to run Ninja Test to test the results. Okay, I think there was one failure there, there were two failures actually. Um, so that was a timeout, the last one, I think there was one up here. Looks like there's two there actually. RTP sync. 
there could be one of these extensive number of modules that aren't part of the BLFS book. It could be one of these that's caused that. Uh, yeah, RTMP dump. So it could be that module that's missing for this RTP. Um, the only thing I think that's worth doing that might alleviate this is to run LD config. Uh, I'll rerun them, but I don't expect that to change. Yeah, there's a failure there. Scroll up, there's one there. Yeah, there's two. The same two have failed. So I think that's probably a problem with modules. And it looks like this last one's going to time out again. So. If that's important to you, I would suggest loading up. Yeah, there's this lib SRTP. Um, could be that one even. Uh, it says several tests need a terminator, terminal emulator in a graphical session. Well, not, that could be the problem. Maybe there wasn't apparently anything that came up. Um, so it's not something I'm going to worry too much about. I'll install it and tidy up. So that's chapter 42. GST plugins bad. So this now leads us back to GTK. Once that's installed, that will allow us to rebuild iBus so we did where do we get to right just to color bad high color icon theme we've got librsvg we're done gobjects done color d needs a reinstallation i seem to remember so let's have a look at that one see what that requires Um, see what notes I made about that one. What chapter is this? Chapter 12. Alright, oh, just for the options. So it looks like this one to build example tools. Pocket SQLite, G, David, G, USB. I think that one's done. Chapter 9, lib. Yep. Known desktop. Ah, maybe that's what it is. Is known desktop. Um. This up in another tab here. I just need to check these. I vaguely remember installing these. I'm not too sure. I've been through so many already. It's hard to remember. Let's see what this bubble wrap does. We obviously haven't done that one. So it's 12. Um, it's just called bubble wrap. No, that hasn't been done. So that could be done. Let's look at these ones. G settings desktop schema. G settings. Oh, right, okay, that's right at the beginning. So that's been done. ITS tool is in 49. That's been done. Lib set, set comp is in chapter 9. 
Let's see how that's done. So it looks like we have actually done this one then. Cable config, chapter 24. Oh yes, that's part of the X window, so that's definitely done. Desktop, yeah, that was already ticked, so let's just check this one now, 33. Right, no desktop hasn't been done. Oh yes, because bubble wrap hasn't been done, so I'm going to do this, bubble wrap, and then we should be able to do GNOME, reinstall Color D, and then carry on with GTK. So, save link as to download that. So let's build this. On the set. And make check. And that's all done. Install it. And that's complete. So that's bubble wrap, which is part of system utilities. So now I can do GNOME desktop. Oops. And we've got some extra options here. So there's no test suite, but does say install test equals true if you wish to enable the install tests. So uh, I'm not sure. If we ignore that. Um, we can change this GNOME distributor if you wish. So we could put kernel text there, for example. Oh, I didn't close the quotes because of the keyboard again. And Ninja to build it. Sudo Ninja install. Okay, so that's GNOME Desktop installed now, so it's part of the GNOME system actually, even though we're not building GNOME at the moment. That's complete. I'll shut that tab down. It's signed off the list. Back to Color D now. Uh, oh, we need color D GTK to build some example tools. So let's get that one. So we've got color D, which we're going to reinstall. If building documentation engine minus J, one must be used. So let's save this link. I'll delete that directory and extract the GTK one. So 
Let's create the build directory first. And then copy the meson command. And edit this. If the API is true, we've got that. Yep, GTK true, we've got that. Docs equals false. Namespace versions of docbook XSL entry. So we can change that to true. Remove this switch if you have the namespace versions of .book. I presume we have. Um, let's just put true in there. Oh, I thought we had that installed. Obviously not. So I have to put false in there. And ninja to build all right it's a warning okay and ninja test so it's a window popped up here Uh, right, I don't know why that's for. Oh, may require a color profile for your display, so it's obviously why it's failed then. Um, so, kind of a bit pointless running the test because I don't think I've got a color profile. So, I'll just do ninja install. That's fine. Remove that, and that's chapter 25, color D GTK. So now I'm going to extract color D to reinstall that the second time. So remove that tab back to color D. So this allows the building of example tools, that last package. So we've added the groups. Don't need to do that again. Now we can actually just check that with a view of the groups file. Group file. So you can see color D is user number 71, which is there, so that's fine. Um, lots have done these move commands. Let's build the or oh, create the build directory and again copy this meson command and see if anything is changing. So, daemon vapi is true, system new falls live color compact true. We haven't got Argyle sensor, we haven't got bash completion, building documentation, so omit if you have GCK docs installed. So I guess we could put true in there rather than deleting it a bit quicker. And man, and this is the one where it says namespace, I think this is what happened last time. Um, it was certainly the same with the GTK version of Color D we just built. So if I put true in there, I imagine it's going to fail in the same. Yeah. So I'll just get rid of that one. Oh, sorry, it's got to be false, isn't it? Yes. So minus D man equals false. Yeah, that's better. So now we can build this with Ninja. OK, 
type now ninja uh, install and now we can run the tests We've got one failure, it's that colour test again. I imagine that's a similar problem to the one we had before. And the false test did actually run. Um, colour self test demon will fail. Yeah, I think we had this before. What we call colour test. So that's fine. We've installed colour D again with the extra examples, I think it was. So I'm going to mark that off as all complete in chapter 12 and I'll close that down and we can now build GTK, oh no we've still got some more haven't we, colour the cups, highlights, runtime only used by GTK4 demo, let's see about this one. So I've got all the dependencies for that. That was set there. Build package. And we'll do GUI front end as well. And now we can install packages. So that's the main program. And the GUI as well. And that's done. So that's in chapter 11. Highlight. Close that down. And we're back to GTK4. Uh, I think I've done these, but I'm going to just double check them. And we've got one more package there to install. So JSON Glib is chapter 9. Yep, that's done. Rest is chapter 33. Yep, that's done. Let's say SSC is chapter 10. Yep, that's done. So we'll build tracker next. 
So all of these look familiar. They've all got links coloured. So save link as. And start building this one. So again, we've got some more options with the meson command. Let's create the build directory, copy the meson command, and see if anything needs editing. So man equals false, we could change that to true because it needs different dependencies to the ones we just did previously with color D. Right, okay, so the other one don't need changing. That's all done. Let's run Ninja Test. It says that a graphical session is needed, so we're all right with that. So that looks like it was all successful. Ninja install. And that's done. So that's chapter 33 again. Tracker. That's done. So finally, we're back to GTK 4 and we're in a position where we can download it and start installing. Again, we'll create the build directory and copy the meson command and modify it. So okay, I've got that. So we can add the sysprof. Because we've got that installed, we've got tracker installed, color D we've got installed, and well, we've got GTK Dot, but we're not building the API documentation, so we'll leave that last one. Uh, so this is Ninja we run next to build it.
Okay, so now I'm going to run the tests. Okay, well, that paused uh, a while through there because it's waiting for Windows, and as you saw, there's lots that appeared. And due to the way that TWM works, I had to click each one of them, so a uh, bit of an achy finger now. And some of them failed because of a timeout, so um, it did say eight are, are known to fail. Out of 730, there's one there. Two. three four five six seven yeah these are all timeouts I'll probably ignore these um, so there's only two true true failures that I can see so I'm happy with that I'm not wanting to go and click all those windows again so I'm just going to install um, if you're particularly concerned about what has failed, it might be advisable to rebuild GTK4 and run the test in another windowing environment that didn't require you to place the window before it appears. So configuration. Just paste this in. And that should be done. Chapter 25 GTK 4 and I'll close that down. Okay, so let's now rebuild iBus, which already downloaded of course so let's extract it so this is a rebuild because of GTK 4 was it? yep and 
to set up this database that was downloaded. Got said and I'll just remove this Unicode dict uh, disabling option. So I'll just skip that and copy the rest. Um, oh, looks like we can add in enable GTK4 as well. So I'm just going to copy that bit in and add in this bit. Enable uh, Python library. I suppose we can add that in as well. And we'll write, yeah, we've got as far as I'm aware all the packages. Enable Python 3. And we're not building any API documentation, so that should be our config. And now we'll build it. Okay, that's built, so let's now run the tests. Let's make check. Okay, so again, I wasn't sure whether to press a button at that point. Um, I didn't, at least I did get an error. Um, but there's only one, I think we had more than one before. So that's pretty consistent. The GTK doesn't seem to have made any difference to the results, but um, I'm happy to carry on with what has come up. So just reinstall it. And we can sign iBus off, which is chapter 11, general libraries. So that's complete. Oops. I'll come out of that tab. Onto libdrm. So this hasn't got any dependencies that are required to install. Oh, this might already be installed, yeah. X25. Lib D 
to the RM. Oh, after optional, I've got a note here to install it, so I'll just extract it because it looks like everything's installed and I recognize everything. Looks like there's nothing to alter in the options, so I'll just copy and paste. And now I'll run Ninja Test. So there's no failures, we've got one skip. Ninja install. Oops. And that's done. So I'll mark that one as complete. Close the tab down and we move on to libcdio. So this needs libcddb or it's an optional add-on. Download information from a CD library, so save link as. Okay, SourceForge. Let me check see if this one was on SourceForge. No, it's not. Okay, so I'll save that. <coughs> Shut down that tab. So this is quite straightforward. libcd db. So it's a configure and make. And make check it says two tests will fail because of missing test servers. I've got three failed for some reason. Looks like there's a character set one again. One was skipped. There's some there, so. Are these more tests than what's mentioned? Looks like there's more than one server failed, is there? Oh no, there's two there. And the third one there. Disk server read. So it looks like two queries failed and the server failed. There's another one there to do with uh, look on, looks like an internet connection. And character set conversions. There's a few oddities there. Um, so I'm not quite sure what that is. I think that's uh, insignificant enough to carry on. I suppose it's not something I use very often at all. So that's libcddb, which is chapter 42. That's marked off. Now we go to libcdio. So we've got the tarball and the required file. So 
we just copy and paste all these commands. Make check. And sudo make install. Now install libcdio paranoia. So this is the other file that we downloaded. Check that. And once again, install it. So that's complete. That's libcdio in chapter 42. So back to down to levels and tidy up. So that's complete. So now we've got frail plugins which needs gavel this needs the PNG which we got so let's download that let's see if this frail is in no it's not ok so let's just skip that server it's obviously down the mirror Save that and shut the tab down. So what have we got here? Um, so, yep, I think we just copy and paste this. Wait for it to install. There's no test suite. Or wait for it to build rather. Okay, so that's finished building. Let's make install and that's gavel complete. And that's in chapter 42 as well. Shut that down. Frail plugins. So it says OpenCV is currently broken. So I guess if that's true, we'll leave the open without OpenCV 
equals true. Um, but we don't need to add in the without gavel because we've got that, so we can actually add in the rest of this and compile that as it is. So now let's install the package. And that's for our plugins complete, which is chapter 42 again. Shut that down, and we're on to X264. So tidy this one up. So it looks like we've got NASM already. Um, uh, it looks like we can just copy and paste the commands that are in the book. Okay, so that's complete. Let's, oops. Let's install. And that's that package done. So X264 is in 42 as well. So I'll shut that tab down and run to lame. So it looks like we've got the two dependencies for this that are in the book. Save link has okay source forge and have a look at the link. Let's get this one as well while we're at it. Right, that's the FDK one. And this is the lame one. Okay, so lame. So it enabled NASM, so it looks like that could be quite useful. So I'm going to copy these options here and add in enable NASM as it says it will enable or compile assembly routines, so basically they'll be optimized. 
if you're in assembly rather than C in theory. Build it. And test it. Looks like that's all there is to it. So now it's time to install it. And that's complete. So lame is in chapter 43. That's signed off. And we go to FDK AAC. So another straightforward one. Configure make. So now we can do make install and that's that done. And that's chapter forty two FDK AC. Now we're back to MPEG to rebuild MPEG. So it looks like the only dependency I've got to no, I don't. I thought I had to do Yasm, but that's uh, optional because we've got Nasm. So, uh, okay. Yep, looks, looks all okay. I'm just going to see if there's any that I needed to reinstall as far as the sound's concerned. It didn't look like I do. So I think I can go on to rebuild. Yeah, it's the optional I've got in my notes. And yep, yeah, I'm happy with that to go ahead and rebuild. So I'm going to copy this set first, then this configure, and I can't remember if there's any modifications, there may well be, but let's go down to the bottom and take a look. So enable free type, we've got that, GPL. Version 3, non free. Shared every sample enables transcode to be compiled. Let's have a look at that one. Oh, I see, it enables this to be recompiled, right? Okay, so libs we've got. DRM. So we've got that now. To 
I think we did that as well, didn't we? we? Must have done if it's linked up here. Yep. Open this as well. I guess the only one we need to add is the last one enable lip pulse to enable pulse audio support. So I'll just add in that. And looks like I didn't copy the complete command. Yes, I missed the first line. So I'll recall that command, go to the front and add that in. <coughs> So built with duplicated library AV resample, but that was for enabling another package, which at the moment I don't know if we will install it or not, but it'll be useful to have it. Um, so FFM has put out a lot of capabilities that are going to be built. So I'll just run make now to build it or rebuild it. Come back and run the tests and it's finished.
Okay, so that's been rebuilt. Let's run this host command here. Um, HTML documents built in the previous step. If you have text live installed, wish to rebuild PDF, so we don't have that. Doxygen, don't have that. Fake test suites, including comparisons with installed files, and should not be run before the package is installed. Therefore, if you decide to run them, the instructions give further down. So let's install, or rather, reinstall. So there's no PDF, there's no API documentation to probably test the installation. Must have RSync installed and follow the instructions for the FFmpeg automated test environment. First, about one gig of sample files used to run FATA downloaded with the command. So, this is where I've got to expand the archive that I created last time. Um, so you can see it's that fate uh, what am I doing uh, fate archive there so I need to expand that Um, so it says you can unpack the files of the source directory and run again the make fate rsync dot dot command above to sync with the sync repository to sync with the repository. Now the download size and time are drastically reduced, reduced. Estimated values in package information do not include the download SPU. Some samples may be removed in a new version. So in order to be sure, local and server fate samples are identical when you previ when you previously saved ex samples run the following command so what it's saying is that if there's a file that's been downloaded previously that doesn't exist in the test suite that file will still exist so this command's got additional um, options in it for example the delete one where it'll delete any files that have since been deleted so this is the best uh, command to run the fact this this command will run but it just won't be as accurate as running this command. So I'll run that and it looks like there's no changes which is not surprising it wasn't um, you know more than a day or so a day or two since I ran it. So now I can run the tests and hopefully this grep command will output a number again that's larger than 3700 so just wait for that to Okay, so it looks like it's failed straight away. Uh, not sure why that would be. Let's have a look at this here. And if I constantly missing Oh, that's why of course I've just noticed that in the test commands you need to specify a number of threads. I've left it as N and that's what it's complaining about. So that's the reason why it's failed. 
So yeah, it's the, now the tests are running. Okay, so we've got 3,854 tests, so that's well over the 3,700. So that looks like a successful test. And I think we can um, sign that one off as complete now. FFmpeg, which is in chapter 44, is fully installed. So I'll shut that tab down. Tidy up and we move on to or back to Q 
QT. So as you can see, we've got through a lot of these dependencies just um, on the way to getting some of the ones specifically required. So just looking through here. So Kerberos not going to install MT Dev. Let's install that one. This looks straightforward. Okay, so it's already downloaded. So either we've already installed it, or um, I've downloaded it and not actually got around to building it. So I'm going to check my book, chapter nine. MT Dev, and I can see that it's been crossed off. So that's purely the fact that the link hasn't been clicked on in this browser. So let's carry on PCRE2. Yep. So lib input looks like. Oops. Accidentally clicked on one of the. Uh, dependencies outside of the book, so that's why I went to a different website. So lib input. So this is part of chapter 24. So there's a chance it might be installed. Oh yes, it will be because it's uh, part of the X Windows. But I might have used lib event because um, those two options. So let's have a look at. No, I haven't downloaded this one, so I'll do this. libfdev, I think, is the one I did, so that library should be there. Yep. Um, so I'll just download this straight away. So I'll open this lib dev as well because I know I've installed that. And kernel configuration. I don't think we need to do that because that's it's actually this lib input is just really part of the uh dependency tree if you like. I mean it probably will be set. Uh we can check it just to be sure. So grab um, sources linux dot config uh, grab that string and you can see it's set so that's fine. So let's create the build directory first. And see if there's any options. So it looks like there might be some changes here. So let's copy this. So this first one is debug GUI equals false. Disables creation of visual debug helper for lib input. Remove if you want it and if you have GTK3 installed. So we could remove that line or set this to true. Might be easier in this case. Test false disables compilation of the main tests. Even if the test defined as false, you can still run first four minor tests as a regular user, but one will be skipped if PY parsing is not installed. So I'll set that to true. Although it sounds like we're going to get some failures anyway. Um documentation is false We've, we haven't got doxygen although we have got gra graphics so that's going to be a bit pointless in setting that and libwacom um, if you have libwacom installed or if you're installing gnome so that sounds like 
Um, it says remove it if you have it installed, which you haven't, or you're installing GNOME. So we are going to be installing GNOME. So in theory, that means we could actually set this to true as well. But I would expect this is going to fail and that the libwaycom package is actually needed. Yeah, it has. So that's kind of worded wrong, that, that um, sentence there. Because it's not one or the other, it's actually if you... Well, if you've got LibWacom installed, basically, um, and if you're installing GNOME, it looks like you do need LibWacom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this directory, uh, push to a two below, go back to the root. I'm going to install LibWacom. So we've got the dependencies here. Extract it and build test disabled. So you need the PY test module, which is not in the book. So I'll leave the test disabled and won't be running the additional tests. Okay, so there's one test ran after that. Install the library and I'll go back and tidy up. Mark off the Wacom as installed in chapter 9. So that's done. And then I'll pop the back here and recall the Meson configure. And this just should now run because we've got Waco installed. It has. So, not installed but configure correctly. Now I can run the build command. And it does actually say here when you run the test that um, a large number will be run and about 20 will fail. Well, there's actually only 29 that are running. And it looks like there's skips rather than failures. So that's, I suppose, a more positive thing to see. Ninja install. There's no documentation to build. So that's that package complete. So I'll just make a note of the fact that libinput has also been installed with the drivers. The X window drivers. And I can shut that down now. Back to QT. Um, where do we get to? It's hard to see now. Libinput, MariaDB. I think we built that, did we? No, it doesn't look like we have yet. So, let's open that up. So this has got a few dependencies, um, not too many. We've built all of these. Um, we can actually do this now. don't think this should be too onerous, so let's download this one. And extract 
front tit. So there's no other options to configure this. So just build it. And if you want to run the test suite, you need to put this set in and then run make this make part check. Okay, that's done. So let's run the install and that's complete. The tarball was libaio underscore and the extracted directory is libaio hyphen. So that's why I was getting a bit of a muddle there. So back to MariaDB, let's have a look at Unix ODBC. Okay, yeah, we can install this one. Save link as. So it looks like we've got PTH. So we can add in this extra option here, enable drivers conf, enables building of driver configuration libraries that are available or installed in previous versions. So that may be useful to you, it doesn't mean a lot to me, but I'll add it in. Let's build it. And now we can install the package. Oh, I didn't install the enable drivers option there. Okay, I'm going to rebuild this. As I missed reading all of the options. And add in the enable drivers. So again, I'm not sure if this would be any use to me. I'm not sure what it does. Um, but if you think it may be useful to you, you can add it in. I tend to find it's better to add in things even if you're not sure in case it actually does something indirectly that you're not really aware of. So if in doubt, add it in. Okay, and let's install it again. And that's now done.
And that's in chapter 11, Unix ODBC.